All right, y'all, this video is going to get into metamorphic rocks. Here's the objectives. We're going to talk about what they are. We'll get into the formation process, the environment of metamorphic rocks, their texture, and then some examples. A little note about the examples. I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures of some common metamorphic rocks. You don't need to memorize those pictures. You're going to see them again in class. All right, so what are metamorphic rocks and what makes them different? Metamorphic rocks form from changes to pre-existing rocks due to intense heat and or pressure. And this always happens deep within the Earth's crust. An important note is that this happens before melting. Because if it happens after the rock has melted, that molten rock turns into an igneous rock after it cools and crystallizes. So this must happen before it melts. Otherwise, it's going to be an igneous rock. And these rocks have nothing to do really with sedimentary rocks. They're not going to break up and turn into sediment and then lithify together. What they're going to do is they're going to take a pre-existing rock. You're going to change it due to intense heat or pressure. This happens deep within the Earth's crust. That's another difference from sedimentary rocks. And they'll turn into a new rock called a metamorphic rock. How does this happen? It happens through a process called metamorphism. Metamorphism is the process by which metamorphic rocks form through intense heat or pressure. And there's two environments of metamorphism. There's regional metamorphism and contact metamorphism. We'll talk about both in just a second. A little note that's kind of important about this deep within the Earth's crust thing. Consider for a minute, here's the Earth, and we learned about the crust of Earth. We can call that the outside line. The deeper you go in the Earth, the warmer the temperatures get. And what happens at that point? The deeper you go into the earth, the warmer the temperatures get. At that point, the rocks will tend to bend instead of break. Why is that important? Because if we want to change one rock into another rock, it's this intense heat and pressure that's going to cause that to happen. If this happened at the surface of the earth, the rock would simply just break into little pieces of sediment, and you would get sedimentary rock. However, because this happens deep within the earth where temperatures are high, you can take one rock, expose it to intense heat and pressure, and it can squeeze into a different rock. And that's the whole idea behind metamorphism. And this happens in one of a couple places. This happens either regionally or contact. Let's go ahead and get into that. Regional metamorphism happens due to higher pressures than temperatures. Now, temperatures are still involved because it happens deep within the earth, but it's just that the pressures are higher than the temperatures. And again, all of this happens before melting. This happens over a very wide area, generally near mountain belts or at plate boundaries. Now when I say wide area, this can cover states. It can be on an entire margin of a continent. Or I'm sure you've heard of plate tectonics before. Plate boundaries are two boundaries between very large pieces of moving earth. We're going to get into plate tectonics in our next unit. But for now, it's good enough to know that when I say plate boundaries, this is just two very large colliding pieces of earth. Let's take a look at an animation to show this. All right, let's take a look at this animation to see how metamorphic rocks form. Here we have some oceanic crust over here and some rocks within the continental crust. And we're going to start this animation. And due to plate tectonics, the Earth is going to start to come and collide. One piece of Earth is going to come and collide with another. And at this, at this point, deep within the Earth, tremendous pressures and temperatures are building. And as you can see right up here, what this is showing is that the minerals within the rocks are all becoming parallel or aligned. This is an example of regional metamorphism where lots of pressure over time are squeezing the crust together under tremendous pressures rather than temperatures and the rock will slowly deform into metamorphic rocks over time and this happens deeper within the earth rather than right at the crust so let's talk about contact metamorphism for a second these are rocks that change due to more heat than pressure Again, we start out with an original rock, and we apply a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, but more heat than pressure, and it changes from one rock to another. In a sense, these are rocks that get cooked. And it happens over a very small area or a local area. 
usually near a volcanic environment or something like that before it melts. And here's what I mean by that. Here's an area with a volcano, and here's some magma, maybe a magma chamber. And it's very hot in the magma chamber, and again, this is molten rock all within this magma chamber of the volcano. But let's consider this area just off to the side. This area here, it's still very hot, kind of like the outside of an oven when it's turned on. Well, this is areas right here surrounding a volcano where it's still very hot, but it's not hot enough to melt the rocks. But it is hot enough to change the rocks from one rock into another rock. So when I say contact metamorphism, this, these rocks form from changes due to intense heat rather than pressures usually surrounding volcanic environments like magma chambers. Alright, so let's talk about textures and metamorphic rock. Now I don't mean textures like igneous rocks with coarse and fine. What I mean by textures within a metamorphic rock would be the arrangement. The arrangement of the crystals. And there's two different arrangements. There's foliated and there's non-foliated. Foliated means that you're going to have crystallized layers, so you're going to look for a layered appearance within those metamorphic rocks. And these generally form because of more pressure than heat due to regional metamorphism. Here's an animation to show how foliation forms. We're going to apply a lot of heat and pressure to this piece of granite here. And after that happens, the rock is literally going to get squeezed under high pressures. And when that does, the minerals within the rock all align in these parallel bands. And we call these parallel bands foliation. And this is what it looks like. So we turn the original rock from granite into gneiss because of high pressures and high temperatures. Non-foliated rocks, you have a uniform non-layered crystallized appearance. They form for more heat than pressure generally due to contact metamorphism. Let's take a look at some examples, but before we do, it's important to get down two more words, and these are your last two vocab words. Parent and daughter. Parent is the original rock. Daughter is what it turns into. Here are examples. Here's a rock that we've seen before. This is called conglomerate, and after conglomerate is exposed to lots and lots of pressure, it turns into this rock right here called schist. And it's foliated. If we take a look here, we can see some alternating bands within that rock. These wavy bands all throughout this rock. That's all foliation. And that forms due to more pressure than heat. Next we have granite. Granite turns into nice. It's a rock that we've seen before. Granite we studied with igneous. And if you squeeze the granite under tremendous pressures, all the minerals will line up into flat bands. And this is a foliated metamorphic rock. The next example would be when you take the sedimentary rock of shale, compact it, and it turns into the metamorphic rock of slate. Shale here is kind of muddy, very loose, easy to pull apart. Slate is a very tough and compact rock. It's what your lab stations are made out of. Next we have shell limestone. And shell limestone, as the name implies, has a lot of shells in it. And after those shells are cooked, they turn into a rock called marble. Marble is used for a lot of statues and a lot of carvings. This is a non-foliated metamorphic rock. Here we have a piece of sandstone. Sandstone, when cooked under higher temperatures rather than pressures, turns into the non-foliated rock quartzite, which is a great building stone. Next, we have bituminous coal, the most common coal used in power plants, which when put under high pressures and high temperatures will turn into anthracite coal, another non-foliated metamorphic rock. And if you missed any of them, here are the examples again in a chart showing the parent rock to the daughter rock. 
In this video, we've talked about what metamorphic rocks are, how they form, where they form, the texture, and examples. Again, the examples you don't need to memorize. You'll see them again in class. However, you will be expected to know them for the rock identification test. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a note on Edmodo or ask me in class.